from your hearts. There is no place for it here. We are watched by the gods, and they will grant us a glorious victory or a noble death today. But for those craven enough to flee, the gods grant nothing but eternal shame. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, so welcome back to the second battle. Uh, remember, if you haven't watched the first, to go back and watch it. I'm not going to ruin what the result was, but if you haven't seen the first battle, go back and watch it. We have Hamilcar Barca, this time commanding Pontus, and this time Carthage is in the hands of Greek Arachlis. So this should be pretty exciting. For Pontus, we have whoo, four units of Cappadocian cavalry, supported by two units of Pontic Royal Cavalry. So this is four very heavy melee cavalry, or heavy melee cavalry, I should say, supported by two units of very heavy shock cavalry. And then in terms of infantry, we've got four naked swords, or should we say mostly naked swords, thank goodness. It's bad enough seeing all that guy thigh. And then for a main line, we have Thurio Spears and Levy Pikemen. So Pontus has a weak front infantry line with a charge-heavy second infantry line with a huge cavalry support. Four eastern slingers up front to do a little bit of skirmishing. So cheap slingers. Let's check out the build for Carthage. I'm going to put it into slow-mo for a minute so we can just catch all this. Looks like both flanks have some late Libyan hoplites. Two on this flank, one on the other. And then I see some late Carthaginian hoplites. Two on this right flank. One on the left, and then in the center, there's some mercenary Samnite warriors, and in the very center, three mercenary Scutari, which are a medium um, Iberian-type infantry for the Carthaginians. There are three skirmishers, one Cretan archer, two Balearic slingers, and then for the cavalry, we're going to have a mix of Scutari and Carthaginian cavalry with a general's bodyguard for the Carthaginians. Let's see what the outcome is here. No surprise not to see elephants from Carthage here, as Pontus does not have the world's best infantry, and they have access to horse archers and other things that would be a nightmare for elephants. As I look at the infantry here, I mean, other than the levy pikemen, which if they can be avoided, shouldn't be too much of a problem, but outside of the levy pikemen, Carthage shouldn't have a difficult time with the infantry. Naked swords will deal a lot of damage on the charge, but they are a glass cannon and they would have to be very careful. From a cavalry standpoint, the Carthaginians are massively outclassed. Massively outclassed by the Pontic cavalry here. The eastern factions tend to pack a heavy wallop in terms of cavalry, while most of them sacrifice that with somewhat crappy infantry. But usually the eastern factions, like I said, heavy with cavalry, and usually heavy on um, skirmishers. So the Cappadocian Cavalry going to lay down a bit of a charge, and it is going to take a bit of a beating getting out of there. Shouldn't be too bad, but there were some javelins inbound, and that puts the pikes into a pretty decent position, honestly. They're going to move up and start engaging some, and then they're going to be supported or uh, attacked from the flank by the mercenary Scutari, and that's going to see more Thurios and pikes come up. And look at this naked sword looking for a nice charge here on the Scutari, and they are running away, and they should. Leaving a flank open to uh, naked swordsmen is wrong on many levels, um, not just tactically. These uh, naked swords over here charging into some late Libyans and doing some pretty extensive damage on the charge. But again, those naked swords are a glass cannon. The quality of the Carthaginian skirmishers is giving the Pontic player, in this case uh, Hamilcar Barca, quite a bit of trouble to start with. He's still in the game, but... The quality of the Carthaginian skirmishers is high, but their numbers are dwindling some, so we'll see that's handled. The Carthaginian cavalry assembles here on his left flank, and it's trying to intercept the charge of these naked swords, understandably. But this Pontic Royal Ca or this Cappadocian cavalry is going to be a problem, and here comes the Pontic Royal cavalry actually going headlong through its own troops. I wonder if it's going to actually get any kills like that, because these hoplite units you would think would be pretty braced. It's going to get a few. It's going to get a few. That Cappadocian cavalry not struggling, uh, not struggling too much versus the Carthaginian cavalry there, and these pikes being used to zone out the rest of the Carthaginian army quite nicely. They want to keep them away. See the skirmishers now trying to work some of the Samnite warriors, and these mercenary Scutari have managed to get the levy pikemen out of formation. Pikes are much better, but they can still lose their formation a bit. And over here we see a ton of Pontic cavalry mixed in. Some Scutari came to support, but uh, I don't think the Carthaginian cavalry is going to fare well in this environment. That armor on the uh, 
Pontic Cavalry is going to be difficult to punch through. And then there's a Pontic Royal Cavalry moving around. And if it starts getting rear charges, it's going to be dangerous. This Pontic Royal Cavalry is trying to pick off some Carthaginian skirmishers here. It tried to come through its own pike unit. <laughs> Actually hit its own pike unit with the charge. It's not going to inflict damage. But, uh, yeah, had the charge through, and it's going to slaughter these Cretan archers. So Pontus should gain a skirmish advantage here, which could become crucial. See how it turns out. These mercenary naked swords putting up a fight against Scutari, not a bad place for them to fight. Levy pikemen are not actually in pike formation here. The Thurio spears otherwise trying to hold out. Looks like some Pontic cavalry trying to move back around the flanks. Carthage putting up a solid fight, considering how outmatched they are here in terms of cavalry. They're going to come charge after these Pontic Royal Cavalry, but since the Pontic Cavalry is going to get a counter charge, the Carthaginian Cavalry will not fare well. The heavy mass and punishing charge bonus of that shot cavalry is going to hurt. In a prolonged melee, the Carthaginian Cavalry would do okay. <clears throat> but like I said, on the charge, it's going to hurt bad. And then when this armored cavalry arrives as backup, it is definitely not going to look good for the Carthaginian Cavalry. And the Carthaginian bodyguard now taking fire from the skirmishers. Things are actually looking pretty good for Pontus at the moment. This cavalry here is free, the general, and it can hunt down these Cretan archers. Should be able to do that with relative ease. The naked swords are being used in different capacities here. This one's going to be used to charge against some of these Scutari infantry in this cavalry fight. And here you can see the Pontic cavalry grouping up against the singled out Scutari cav and... Carthage, although at a huge disadvantage, has put up quite the fight here from a cavalry perspective, but the numbers game is playing against them. There's 104 kills on this Pontic Royal Cavalry. Really would like to see it go kill these Cretan archers because they're causing a little bit of damage there. Looks like that's what's going to happen. Thurio Spears and Levy Pikemen. Levy Pikes show that they're in Phalanx formation, but they don't have their... Yeah, their pikes are out. They're just in a screwy formation because of the way the combat's gone. This Pontic Royal Cavalry is just landing some huge charges. You can see the kills just start to rack up. It's taking a bit of damage as it does it, but it is definitely swinging that fight. Um, Carthage has punched through the somewhat squishy Pontic lines, but here comes the heavy cavalry to support, and you can see the skirmishers having their way with this infantry. And here comes the Pontic Royal Cavalry on an intercept as well as the Cappadocian Cavalry. Let's see what's happening over here. The Cappadocian Cavalry mopping up the last Carthaginian Cav, and there's a Pontic Royal Cav here as well. So again, skirmishers in trouble. There's one Levy Pikeman that somehow got way back here that's not being microed, or it's, it could just be a mess up in the replay. I'm not sure. Not 100% certain. I don't think the replays are bugged anymore, but you never know. Rome 2's always had a lot of bugs. These Thurio Spears are going to get in here to help support the uh, Pontic Royal Cavalry, which is good, and the Skirmishers are pouring in fire. There's also a few Cappadocians being charged in to help. Uh, but the numbers of the Carthaginian player here, they definitely have infantry numbers, and uh, it looks like that um, potentially uh, the Pontic player is going to find himself in a similar position here with a lot of heavy infantry left to deal with, but this time he's got Skirmishers. And he's got cavalry. And this Pontic Royal Cavalry is going to lay down some punishing charges on these swordsmen. If it can keep itself alive and deliver a few more charges, that's a big deal. And over here, pincering Scutari between two heavy cavalry units is going to hurt bad also. Those naked swords did a really nice job there. This Cappadocian Cavalry is going to be brought to bear over here. And it looks like the pikeman is activated. So, must have been a mistake earlier. The Pontic General, very gutsy charges here. I don't know if the General is already dead. But very, very gutsy charges. Uh, trying to give the skirmishers, these Eastern Slingers, although a weak unit in general, Slingers have decent armor piercing damage. And in the late game, having Slingers like this is just devastating to armies who are left with only infantry because the higher armor piercing value takes a toll, especially once units have had their health chipped away at throughout the entire battle. So it's definitely going to take a toll. Naked Swords attacking these late Carthaginians, being pincered by Pontic Cavalry. They are in a hoplite wall, which will increase their bracing from the front, at least. 
but that's still going to damage morale badly, being hit by pincering attacks. And you can see these mercenary naked swords being used to cycle charge. The Thurio spears are going to fix them, and the swords will probably turn around or get ready to face down at the other incoming Carthaginian infantry. And you can see the Carthaginian uh, army chasing desperately these slingers, and they do need to kill them if they want to have a chance to do this. However, it's really surprised to see these Cretans are still alive, but they have their daggers out, so it's possible that the Pontic player is just unconcerned because they're out of ammo. And the general's bodyguard is still around for Carthage as well. Interesting. Not much they can do with all the Pontic cavalry still swarming about, I don't think. This Hapote unit's being kited quite effectively. And then here's the cavalry cycling their charges. This is going to take a huge toll on Carthaginian leadership, especially if that general is indeed dead, and it looked like the general was dead. Plus, there's a levy pike coming in. That levy pike gets into a pike phalanx. Um, it's going to be pretty rough here. And then here, look, ooh, yeah. Eastern Slinger, shots in the back. Carthaginian morale is going to tank um, as a result of this. But the Pontic morale is also bad in terms of the infantry, so we'll see. The Cretan archers are now going to get their due. They survived all that time firing away. And they will be destroyed. Let's just see how this finishes up. It's been a pretty... Man, these battles have been fantastic so far. It's definitely in favor of Pontus. I would expect they can pull this off. Daggers out for the Slingers. They're either out of ammo or going in for a glory charge here in order to surround and rout the Carthaginian forces. So when the pajama men come rolling in, it's either desperate times or exciting times. And the Carthaginian troops are going to chain rout. Another very impressive battle between these two players. So game two is going to go to Hamilcar Barca and his Pontic troops against his namesake Carthage. So another very impressive battle. Let's take a look at the stats there. So at this point it stands one. If you haven't seen Battle 1, go watch it. I'm actually not going to say how it stands just in case you haven't watched it. Don't ruin it. Go watch it before you watch Battle 3. What are you doing watching number 2 before you watch number 3? Come on, get it in order. <laughs> Anyway, fantastic game between Hamilcar and Iraklis. Again, both of these guys, fantastic players. So I'm excited to look at the battles from them and uh, let you all see how they turn out. But this was game two. We're going to head to game three. Um, and we can see here that the Pontic Royal Cavalry having a pretty good time. Some of the Cappadocians having a pretty good time as well. Those naked swords, I mean, just look at this. Some great work with, a again, a kind of a glass cannon unit there. And look at the kills on these slingers who made it to late game. They're just devastating when they get there. Uh, Carthage had some fantastic skirmishers here, but it wasn't enough um, to, to uh, overcome uh, what the Pontic player had here, especially when you start counting that cavalry. And nice work by some of the infantry on the part of Carthage. Some of their infantry did fairly well, but I mean, the Pontic infantry, most of which was fairly squishy. Though you can see where those kills came in, probably from the pikemen. Uh, those mercenary swords, though, again, nice use, nice job cycle charging. Great game to both players. Hope you enjoyed it, and I will be back with game three.